everyone, it's Kathy Zulski. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm playing with some brand new products from Gina K Designs and ThermaWeb. Got my hands on some of her new Glitz Glitter Gel as well as some of Gina's new Stampin' Stencil. And while I am not going to do any stamping with that set, I am definitely going to be using the stencils which work fantastically on their own just as a classic stencil. So let's take a look at the products I'm using. Here's the Glitz Glitter Gel. You know, say that three times fast. Comes in lots of colors and I'm using white. And here is the detail stencil. And as you can see, that big, beautiful flourish is just fantastic. So I thought that would look really good on the card project that I'm going to be sharing today. I've got a bunch of Gina inks. I am slowly amassing full-size pads. And this is Dusty Rose Jelly Bean Green. I have Sweet Mango. And I also have Sea Glass underneath that. And I have Sweet Corn and Plum Punch. I'm creating a very simple rainbow of color. Going to be blending them on today with the life-changing brushes. Love those brushes. And I've got some, well, I've got my palette here, that cute little lavender-handled thing that's going to help me put my gel onto the stencil. A little purple tape. And I'm going to be using some of Gina's white embossing powder, the fine detail, along with some Versamark. I've also got an incentive set from Gina. This is called Wild Roses, and I will be using a tiny little thank you sentiment on my card. I've also got today this A2 Layers die set from Waffle Flower, and it cuts the US size A2 in mats all the way down from the full size of four and a quarter by five and a half all the way down. Very cool for creating layers on your cards. For cardstock, I will be using some of Gina K's Pure Luxury White Heavy Base Weight cardstock, along with some of her Whisper, which I didn't show here. Got my Misty, because I'll do a little stamping using that. And I've also got some of this new Pixie Spray from ThermaWeb, and this stuff is legit. Just going to say it, and you'll see that in a bit. All right, well, let's jump into the project. Now, I've cut a piece of cardstock down. This is the Gina K Pure Luxury White. And I'm going to be using my Tim Holtz glass media mat and using the tick marks, if you will, the measurement grid to set up how I'm going to lay down my bands of color. I love this because you line up the top point and bottom point and that gives you this perfectly straight way of adding diagonal bands. Now I'm starting with the Dusty Rose and one of my blending tools and I'm just going to start blending it on. This, you can go as dark or as light as you like. I wanted there to be a little bit of gradation so it looked darker at the base of that stripe. And then, once you get that on and you think it looks how you like it, what you're gonna do is you wanna make sure to clean off your brush and all I did was just go back and forth until it looks like no ink comes off and that really is enough if you're doing a rainbow order. And then I brought in this paper towel to wipe off the tape because as you can see, the ink will pool on this purple tape. And then you just peel it off and repeat. Now, most of the stripes that I'm creating are going to be three quarters of an inch because the uh, grid on this mat is actually in their inch squares. And so I know the sizes that I want, but for the top part, I'm just taping some cardstock over the part that I've already ink blended. The reason I'm not using purple tape up top is it doesn't stick as well to ink that is not completely dry. And even though Gina's ink dries pretty quickly, it still is a little wet and I didn't wanna risk having it come up and overlapping in a way that I just wasn't trying to do with this particular project. So using that piece of cardstock, taping it in place, and again, repeat. Look at that nice crisp line. I'm repeating with the sweet corn, the exact same process, just moving everything down. And again, still doing the three quarters of an inch or three grid squares on the glass media mat. But for this band where I knew I was going to put my sentiment, it needed to be a bit deeper. So this one's an inch. The jelly bean green is going down into a space that's an inch. And again, just blending on the ink and looks fantastic. All right, moving on. I did kind of lift every time to peek to make sure that I hit it right because I actually did make a little boo-boo down in the purple area, but you're you're not even gonna you're not even gonna well you might notice it, but hopefully you won't. Repeating with the sea glass and 
the end of the rainbow, well not completely, is the plum punch, but I decided to just start repeating that color scheme again just for the bottom. So a little bit of the dusty rose on top and a little on the bottom. I think that looks really good. Now once this is completely dry, I'm going to stamp a sentiment, but I want to make sure that I place my sentiment right where I'm going to be cutting. I want to have the equal amounts of pink on the top and the bottom. So I'm taking that little thank you and placing it down. Just going to pick it up with the misty door. Everything will come up with it, but that's fine because it's, it's in the right place. And now I'm going to take my embossing magic pad and really get a good coating of powder down because there's a lot of ink on here and I really just want my powder to stick to where I'm stamping my Versamark. I'm just using my little Versamark cube here, inking up the small stamp and pressing it down. You don't need a misty to do simple stamping like this, but I do, trust me. <laughs> All right, sprinkling on the powder and tapping it off. And anything that sticks, you can just take a dry brush and go over it really well and get the excess powder off before you heat set it. My heat tool is nice and hot and I bring it very quickly to the paper and it turns shiny and white. Now here's the pixie spray. I'm gonna do this off camera, but this stuff is really cool. You spray it down on the back of your stencil let it sit for a minute, and then it creates a low tack, but strong enough to actually stick to your paper. Now I put a piece of paper just to really press it down. It'll hold it in place, and why I like that is there's all these little details in this stencil, and you know, the Glitz gel is very creamy, it's very smooth, but still, knowing that the entire stencil is being held in place and is not going to move, I, I did tape down purple, tape at the top and bottom, but that was just as a safety backup. The adhesive works really well and it does not mar your project in any way. So I'm just using my best cake decorating skills here. I get nervous with any kind of palette and gooey thing, but the glitter gel is really smooth. Like it, it goes on smooth, it scrapes off really smooth, and once I was happy with the amount that I had on here, then I gently hold down the stencil, took off the purple tape at the top and the bottom, and then you want to lift your stencil up decisively, straight up, so as not to mar any of the gel, and that looks really good. Now I'm gonna show you one that has dried already, same, same design, and it's kinda of cool because it gets less opaque and a little more glittery, so looks pretty good. Now, purple tape, I love it. I use it all the time, but look what they came out with. Yes, a half inch purple tape. And the thing that's so nice about this tape is that it's narrower and perfect for holding your dies in place. I placed the die over the area that I wanna cut. It's held in place with the purple tape and the cut looks great. You just wanna make sure that your Glitz gel is completely dry before you cut. I think that looks really nice. Now, a piece of cardstock that I didn't show you before is the Whisper color. This is also new from Gina. It's a very pale, but somehow like warm gray. It's beautiful. So I cut this out with the neck size up so that I could have a perfect little light gray mat on my colorful panel. I'll just use Gina K's Dot Runner. This is my favorite, favorite Dot Runner, and I am a Dot Runner girl. And I'm just gonna add it to the back get a nice coating. I, I'm kind of going overkill a little just because it does have you know, the glitter gel and all the ink blending. I really want it to adhere evenly. I'm just gonna press that down and now I have a nice, perfectly matted card panel. I think that looks really nice with the gray. My card base is going to be five and a half by four and a quarter. So I'm giving it some scores at the top there and just pressing it down. Now I'm always a fan of taping my cards closed because they need to be flat. I can't see what I'm doing unless they're flat. And I'm telling you what, the half inch purple tape, brilliant. Smaller, see, you're just, you're using less. I love it. All right, I've added some foam tape to the back of my card panel and I'll just line this up on the card base until all the margins are even and press that down. And that is my finished card project. I just think that Glitz gel is so pretty. It's a very simple design in the end, but lots of fun and doable techniques. So thanks for watching my video today. Be sure to check out the products that have been released from Gina K and ThermaWeb. They are a lot of fun to play with. I would love to have you become a subscriber 
and I will see you back here with another card project video soon.